Welcome, Tale Tellers. It's Tuesday, and it's raining here in Australia. <laughs> you won't be able to hear it because I've noise cancelled it out, but believe me, it's pouring. Yep, we need it, don't get me wrong, but weeds don't. <sighs> anyway, today's story title is Sold My Soul for a Used Dishwasher and I Want It Back by Pete the Seed. A tongue in cheek story that's sure to have you smiling and creeped out. It's also a special one, because I have an old narrator friend here today joining me to help me out. His name is Immunity Zero. He has a YouTube channel that I'll link in the description, so if you like his great voice, check out his channel. Before we hop into our story, an awesome fan wrote me a letter via email straight on my website, so I'm going to read it out because I wanted to thank them, and then I'll thank more awesome fans. Name, Yakko. <laughs> Subject, Just Wow. Address, Champaign, Illinois. I actually get a lot of listeners from there, so it's fantastic to hear from one. I listen to podcasts on my way to work each day, and this has easily become one of my favorite to go to. You do an excellent job, oh thank you, reading and the stories have always held my attention. Just know that your hard work is appreciated. Thank you so much, Yakko. What a lovely email. It's made my week. Cheers, buddy. Now, let's get to our shoutouts. Troy Shaw, the ears of clarity. You're like a fan with superpowers, spotting out any gaps in my audio. Thank you for your likes, Troy, and I really appreciate it. Arkin Brother, for all your awesome stories you send in. He's the author of our ongoing series here called The Tale Teller. Check them out when you get a chance. Thank you, mate, for all your support and your voice acting talent. Voice man, mate, so glad to see you on here. He's a fellow narrator as well, and he does a great job at narrating stories and is moving to film reviews, I believe, or film structural reviews or critical reviews at the least. So you can find him on Vidme as well. Thanks, buddy. And some listeners that I noticed are listening. Nelson Brake, Naomi Leon, Quasar Bolt. Hey, buddy. Thank you. Dougie and Peas. Sex Machine. <laughs> Love that one. And Maria Cullen. Yes, I pay attention to those that listen. So thanks. Okay. Turn the lights off, the sound up, and stay warm on this rainy night. And hear something different. As the title says, I sold my soul for a used dishwasher. It seemed like a solid trade at the time. It was online. A guy was selling it on a local for sale site, and the guy wanted like 200 pounds for it. I don't have that kind of money, and I asked if he'd be willing to go any lower. In a joking manner, he suggested that he'd sell it for my soul, and even including free shipping and installation. Sweet! Sign me right up. He emailed some documents which I didn't even read. I signed and the next day, two men showed up and installed it. I was pretty smug and assumed the guy just needed to get rid of it and had a sense of humor. However, it's since come to light that I may have actually given away my soul. Oh, and souls are real. Who knew? Not me. Being soulless seems to come with a few side effects that have slowly but surely begun to impact my daily life. I don't dream anymore. Instead, each and every night, I find myself entering a pool of nothingness that I can't quite describe. I don't really have much passion for anything. Not that I was the most passionate guy around before. I'm what you'd call a go-with-the-flow type of guy anyway. I don't laugh or cry. I've never been happy nor sad, angry or excited. Everything is inconsequential. Nothing has meaning. I just am. Oh, and I can see the dead, which kind of sucks. I first realized that I could see the dead when I walked into my apartment and saw a dead guy. He was just standing there, staring at me. It was pretty horrifying, honestly. I don't know how I knew he was dead. It was just an instinctive feeling I got. Plus, he's sometimes slightly transparent which is a bit of a giveaway. He doesn't talk to me either. He just walks around the apartment looking pretty pissed. I guess I would be too. I learnt from a neighbour that he died from a heart attack caused by Viagra, and that the girl had freaked out and bailed on him without calling the cops. 
took a few weeks for him to be found too. When the apartment began to secrete a rather unique stench. He's still stiff down there. <sighs> Naked too. It's uncomfortable, sure, but I don't exactly have the means to move somewhere else. Truthfully, he's kind of a chill dude as far as the dead go. He just looks frustrated all the time, but mostly keeps to himself. Spent a lot of time in the bathroom, staring at himself in the mirror. He leaves when I need to shit though, so at least he's considerate. I call him Gary. Besides my other real roommate, the dead mostly wander around doing nothing. They can't really interact with anything, which I guess is pretty dull. There's not as many of them as you might think, because I suppose most of them move on to the next place. They're not all like Gary either. The vast majority that I've seen have disturbed me beyond measure. Burnt walking corpses forever crying out and yelling and screaming in agony. Fathers and mothers following their families, crying out to be noticed, begging to be able to tell their loved ones that they're still with them, but having absolutely no way to do so. The children are the worst. They don't have the means to understand what has happened to them and spend their days wandering the busy streets, reaching out for a helping hand that can't perceive them. It would be tough to watch were I not, well, soulless. Anyway, I decided that it was time to get my soul back. It's more of a principal thing than anything else. I don't like the thought of someone playing with it, touching it. It grosses me out. Plus, there's the whole eternal damnation thing, which is pretty daunting. The dishwasher has also started leaking, and I didn't exactly get a warranty. I hadn't managed to make much headway getting it back. There's not much solid information out there about reclaiming souls, believe it or not. I tried contacting the guy who bought it, to see if he accepts refunds. He hasn't replied to my messages, which is a bit of a dick move. Mostly, I just spent my time browsing the internet. No such luck so far, but I'm optimistic. Anyway, last night I came upon some article about the absolutely deepest recesses of the internet, somewhere no living man has ever been. It was page 5 on Google. It was a ritual to summon a demon, a decent starting point, I figured. It's not exactly like I can be dismissive of the supernatural any longer. I won't go into the details, but let's just say that it involves some candles, burning some incense, and offering up a series of foreign spices. I'll admit it, I raided my neighbor's spice rack. Nothing really happened at first. I prepared the summoning as instructed, chanted the words as best as I could. Gary joined me, sitting on the sofa and watching. I wish he'd at least put down a towel before he sat on things, but each time I'd suggest it, he'd just walk away through a wall or something. There's no sense arguing with some people. I eventually gave up, sat down next to Gary and turned on the TV. We watched some Netflix, I had some beer. Gary stared at his ghostly boner for a while. Not a bad evening. I'd almost forgotten about the entire summoning thing when my apartment burst into a supernova of despair. Green flames roared and licked the ceiling, emerging from an abyss that opened up on my floor. My heart grew still, and my blood ran cold. Not because my landlord made it very clear that any damages to the wall and ceiling was coming straight out of my deposit, but more so because I was immediately filled with the daunting sensation that I had made a huge error in judgment. I may be empty, but the one thing I could still feel was fear, apparently. I suppose it's instinctual. A residual survival instinct left over from when I had been truly alive. A voice emerged from the fire, so deep that I could feel the vibrations weaving through my bones. It was familiar, but utterly alien at the same time. A voice I'd heard a thousand times, but also never at all. My brain immediately informed me that I should be running away from whatever unnatural hellscape I had just welcomed into my home. My knees seized, making that impossible. Filth, shit, and blood running over mountains of flesh and bone and bile. People piled together in pits with hands and arms outstretched reaching towards the sky. A mass of men and women and children, all screaming and begging and crying out, clawing at each other and trying to pull themselves from the pit of their own waste, 
like maggots festering in a wound. My words caught in my throat, the inside of my mouth drying in an instant. All right, okay, noted. Now, if we could just go back to the issue at hand. There is pain, unimaginable oceans of pain that drag you down into a depth of horror the likes of which the living cannot even begin to comprehend. Voices screaming eternally for mercy from a god who cannot hear them. Parents trample their children for but an instant of relief from the ceaseless torment. Storms of acid rain down upon the- Yeah, yeah, I got that. Now, I really do have some questions if you have a moment. I get the feeling I won't be able to do this twice. Ask, then, mortal. But know the words cannot convey the true reality that awaits all that walk the earth. There is no escape. There is no heaven. There is no justice. There is only- Pain. Yeah, I got that. Well, I guess I just want to know uh, how to go about getting my soul back. I kind of feel like I was misled on the whole deal. Really. But I'm starting to think there's uh, no union I can really take my concerns to. The fire grew dim for a few moments, as though it was pondering over my words. My apartment grew silent. Gary looked at me, bewildered. He apparently deemed what was occurring more important than his eternal erection. You summoned me here, mortal, for such a petty concern as a soul. I, who has forged empires and tempted saints, whose name is forbidden a thousand worlds for fear that I shall return to reap what is owed. You dare bring me such trifles? The crackling of flames seemed to turn into more of a taunt from the damned. I could see faces within them writhing out with mouths outstretched, howling into eternity. Some looked at me with pleading eyes, as though I was the savior to free them from this misery. Others had no eyes at all. Only he who has claim over your soul may return it, and only from his own free will. Souls cannot be stolen or claimed, they can be only given freely. Okay, that was something I could work with. I stood up and took a few steps back from the flames, cautiously. I hadn't thought of how I was supposed to end this summoning because I honestly hadn't expected anything to come of it. Hindsight can really bite you, I guess. The laughter grew louder until it filled what felt like the world. Winds howled outwards, carrying wails with them that each told the tale of a different torment. A few beads of sweat began forming on my brow, my stomach turning in knots. Who holds your soul, I cannot say, mortal, but you have more pressing matters at hand. You may be soulless, but you will still feel every single one of the sweet pleasures that damnation has to offer. You will come with me now, and taste the sweet nectar of true suffering. From the black abyss that covered the ground, an outstretched hand emerged, the palm larger than my head. Its skin was ashen grey, cracked with veins of pure fire. The nails were sharper than a knife, and scratched deep grooves into my wooden floor as the beast pulled itself upwards. You are mine now. You will come with me, willing or not. There is no escape. You will witness firsthand my dominion. I will tear you limb from limb and then reform you whole to experience it all again. Your memories of life will fade and only suffering will- Gary stood from the sofa and walked towards the abyss in all his naked glory. He raised an outstretched hand from which a pillar of light shot forth that almost blinded me. I can still see spots. The beast roared and screamed, its arms shedding into dust and falling into the darkness. The flames withdrew with it, and with a sudden gust, the hole vanished to nothingness. Gary looked at me, shrugged, and walked into the bathroom to stare at himself in the mirror. I didn't ask. So, that was yesterday. I've spent the night processing the entire ordeal, and figure it's time to start looking. So, if anyone knows a guy that trades user appliances for souls, let me know. I'm open to suggestions as well. If anything develops, I'll be sure to let you guys know. Awesome story. I loved how tongue-in-cheek it was. Combining horror and comedy is difficult, you know. And hopefully, I did this story justice. Thank you, Pete the Seed, for your talented writing skills. It was an absolute pleasure to read your story. And also, Immunity Zero talk about the most creepiest demon voice to hit my podcast. 
You know, he did that all by himself. I normally have to modulate voices or add effects, which isn't a problem, that's my job. <laughs> but Immunity Zero sent it straight to me, all demonified up. Cheers, mate. You're always great to work with. Before I sign off, one thing to say. What's the best way to support this channel? Well, because I can't hear you, I'm going to assume you guessed the right answer. Why, yes, listener, on the money. It is sharing this podcast around. Seriously, if you know someone that would love this podcast, send me to them so that I can hop into their ears and whisper stories to them. Ha, huh. well, that came out way creepier than anticipated. Either way, share this podcast around if you can. It's 100% free and always will be with fans as great as you. And I make these narrations just for you. So I appreciate all the support that I get. Okay, tale tellers, it's that time. This is the place where stories live, and you tale tellers come to listen. Enjoy your day or night, and join me every weekday for our creepy tradition. And as always, till next time.